So R is a position vector, and, and I would also, I'm going to use the word, I just used the word location, I'm going to use it a lot, it tells you where something is. What if this something is moving? Then its position vector is changing with time, its location is changing with time. Right now, this, my center of mass is moving east, essentially at a constant speed. Okay, now I'm moving west, essentially at a constant speed. So, the rate of change, so my position vector is changing, my location is changing. The rate of change is what we call a velocity. So the rate of change is just the derivative of the position vector with respect to time. And for most of what we're going to do, what I want to say is that that derivative, you can think of it as a delta r over delta t. How much is the location changing in one, in a certain amount of time, delta t? Sometimes you'll want to think of that limit as delta t goes to zero, and that would be how is the position changing now, rather than this delta r over delta t is a, is a change over some time, but that limit lets us talk about how a position is changing at any specific time. So we'll get a chance to practice with all of that. Um, momentum then is just uh, momentum then is just the mass of the object times its velocity. So I'm just going to leave it at that right now, and in practicing with it, we will we will find out uh, how to talk about momentum. Uh, because I said velocity, I'm going to remind you again, the velocity depends on the change in the position vector. Change in something means final minus initial. And that means we're going to have to be able to subtract vectors to figure out the direction of the change. Down here on this third line, I wrote something that, that Newton told us, I don't know, 400 years ago, long, long time ago, that if you want to change the momentum of something, delta p is the change in the momentum of something. Usually the momentum isn't, the mass of something isn't changing. Usually I identify a physical system and my mass, the, all the uh, atoms and molecules that make up that physical system don't change, so the mass of the system doesn't change. So usually it isn't the mass that's changing, but it's velocity. My velocity right now is zero, and now my velocity points east. And so it has changed. It's changed from zero to east. I hope you're not surprised that the change is toward the east. Since there wasn't any velocity at the beginning, in the end it's toward the east, the change must have been toward the east. And Newton told us that, well, if, you're cha if your velocity changes, that tells you something about interactions. You've already done this in 7a. Describe interactions by forces. We're going to be a lot more careful in 7b. Because we're going to have force being a vector. And then the interactions uh, are going to have to all be added together. In general, you have a lot of interactions with, with surroundings. Right now, I'm leaning on the table, so the table's interacting with me. My feet are still on the floor, so the floor's interacting with me. There's one other thing that's always around when I stand here in lecture. Is there another object? Yeah, gravity, the Earth. Gravity is the name for the force, but the Earth is the object that's pulling down on me. So I got three objects pulling down on me. Somehow, according to Newton, if you add up all of the forces due to those three objects, you find out the change in my velocity. Change in my momentum, actually. My mass didn't change, so I, I shorthanded that with change in velocity. Right now, my velocity isn't changing. 
that tells you something about those three forces. They have to add together, since my velocity isn't changing, the change in momentum is zero, the three forces have to add together to give me zero. What about this? Zero velocity, and I start moving that way. So the change in my momentum is to the east. Whatever forces were interacting, whatever forces were, were causing that, had to point, this is a vector equation, the only, reason, the only way two vectors can be equal. If I draw a vector like this, and I call that delta P A, and I draw another vector, for that, to, for the sum of, and the other vector is going to be called the sum of the forces on A, I'm going to integrate that over T. How do I make sure the sum of the forces vector is exactly the same as delta P A? Uh, it's got to look exactly the same. This, this vector, <laughs> not exactly the same. In fact, it's an opposite direction. For two vectors to be the same, they have to have the same direction and the same magnitude. The magnitude we draw is the length. The length of the, of the arrow that we draw is, is how big the physical quantity is. This is how big this change in momentum is. And so, the sum of the forces t integrated over time from t initial to t final has to be the same vector. So the horizontal piece of delta P A has to be equal to the horizontal piece of this sum of the forces integrated over T. And the vertical parts have to be the same also. If two vectors are identical, then their x components are identical. Their horizontal pieces are identical. If some object is at the same location as me, then it also is 10 feet to the west of that table, 3 feet in front of the blackboard and touching the ground. OK, there's some dirt on my shoes. So there is actually an object at that location, approximately. I want to get at two points here, and then we'll start practicing. One is delta, we, we want changes in things, and so we're going to have to subtract vectors. And the other is Newton tells us that the change in momentum depends on the sum of a bunch of force vectors. So we're going to have to add vectors also. We're going to have to be able to add and subtract vectors to make sense of, the, of these equations. So I'm going to ask you this one in a second. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go back and say what I said before. Well, suppose I want to add two vectors together. I, sh I show you two vectors here, A and B. If I want to add two vectors together, I put the tail of one of them. That's this piece right here. These vectors, I, since, since we draw them as arrows, it makes sense to talk about the arrowhead here and the tail of the arrow on the, on the other side. So the tail of B, we move over to the head of A. And, but I have to keep the same vector. So to keep the same vector means I have to have the same direction and same length. So when I move this thing over here, it has to be parallel to B because it has to be the same direction. So it has to point along B, and it has to be the same length. If I make it the same length, it looks like that's about right. Just put the tail of B at the head of A. And then I have, what I have is a construction that looks like, well, OK, if I start it at the beginning, at the tail of A, I go up to the head of A. That gets me to the tail of B. And then I can go down to the head of B. Again, this whole thing is a, a tail at this end and a head at the other end. C is a vector that starts at the beginning of those two and ends at the end of those two. So that's what I'd like you to do in this problem right here, in this question right here. What's the direction of F1 plus F2? So you add the tail of, or put the tail of F2 on the head of F1. And you find something that starts at the beginning of F1 and ends at the end of F2. And that vector 
is F1 plus F2. 